Hello everybody, uh, my name is David, I'm the session chair and it's a very um, pleasure for me to introduce you our first talk which is uh, by my colleague uh, Miroslav Shedivi and it's called Vim Your Python, Python Your Vim and it's especially interesting because there is like a running gag in the company what can be done uh, by Miro with Vim, especially without using the mouse. And uh, so, I'm, um, huh? <laughs> um, so I'm very interested what he what he's done. I think he's even done the slides in Vim. I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. So here you go. Thank you, David. So my name is Miroslav Shedivi and this is how my keyboard looks like. Uh, is anyone else uh, having the similar keyboard layout? Very nice. Sometimes I hate it. No, it's beautiful. I like it especially because it's so simple. Uh, it has no more than two symbols per key and uh, it's, uh, it works very well with uh, my editor of choice uh, with Lim. It's almost perfect, but we can see what we can do with it. Weil wenn man auf Deutsch schreibt, ihr könnt jetzt äh, die Umleute und äh, scharfes S auf der englischen Tastatur nicht hinkriegen. Ähm, dann braucht man natürlich die Deutsche. O, Ö, Ä ne? äh, und äh, scharfes S. Äh, wer von euch, der mich jetzt gerade versteht, weiß, dass es auch große scharfe S gibt? Ja. Wie macht ihr das auf eurer deutschen Tastatur? Shift, äh, scharfes S ist Fragezeichen, genau. Ähm, aber das Problem ist, das ist keine Querte-Tastatur, das ist eine Querzitastatur. Äh, Querzitastatur, ja, und äh, viele andere Sachen sind eigentlich ein bisschen woanders. Wegen ein paar Sonderzeichen muss man sich merken, wo Punkt, Fragezeichen, Schrägstrich, Anführungszeichen und äh, Klammern sind. Wenn man sich ein bisschen mehr als 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 Úplne najhoršie je, že čísla sa robia so shiftom. Když pak píšete česky, E s háčkem, R s háčkem môžete napsadiť na české klávesnici, ale U s kroužkem na slovenské klávesnici není. Kromne U s kroužkem sa pak premistí také niektoré další klávesy. Je ska kelkán a deža ekrit sur un klavie francé. Moi, j'ai appris a utiliser VI ou VIM sur le klavie francé. Alors, si on arrive à faire ça, on arrive à faire vraiment tout. Le clavier français, c'est pas QWERTY, c'est pas QWERTY, c'est AZERTY, le M, il est ailleurs. Et le point dont on a besoin le plus, on le fait avec un SHIFT. Eran todas esas, esas tastaturas, no tastaturas, teclados diferentes. Um, yo conozco los cinco uh, teclados, no conozco el teclado es, uh, español, castellano, pero de vez en cuando uh, tengo que escribir en castellano. Y con N, con, uh, con tilde o uh, signo de interrogación o exclamación uh, abiertos, uh, tenéis que escribir uh, con un teclado uh, castellano. Italiano, la stessa cosa, uh, non ci sono tante lettere differenti, ma abbiamo bisogno di de un'altra uh, tastiera. Po polsku, to è svogulne inej, tam sono jakéž ogonki, i kresky, i uh, kropki, i všetko možlivé. I ak píšete do kogož, do štena zýva Gregož Brženčiš Čikievič, i mieška v Chčončiže vo Šice poviat venko vody. Je spočeva uh, polskej klaviatúře, ktorú v ogóle neznám, ale potrebuje písať, uh, jak to môže zrobiť. Uh, po svenska anvender má ame drink, a moďar ABC benke tež uh, ilieš EKZ talohato iš, Kvankam Esperanto estas internacia lingvo, ankau existas tre specialai literoi ve türkče de kičik noktas es e ve bjuk noktali ivar. And we have only scratched on the surface. <laughs> so, as I mentioned, like a minute before, uh, with the five keyboards that are totally different um, and uh, many other uh, letters that, or characters uh, that you would like to write. Um, uh, how could you do it, manage it on one physical keyboard with your two physical hands and one physical brain? 
Uh, you can switch between these uh, keyboards, but uh, remembering where, where all the uh, parentheses, uh, quotes, and so on are, uh, it's uh, quite difficult. Uh, you can try something like charm up, but good luck scrolling or remembering all the uh, numbers uh, of the of the codes uh, of the of those uh, characters. Fortunately, in the 80s there was something like compose key. Who of you knows about compose key? Very nice. It's always compose. It's always compose. Yes. Um, this, these are two keyboards from the 80s. Unfortunately, then came MS-DOS and similar systems that uh, don't need them. Uh, but we can use them. If you use uh, Linux, you have it already provided in your system. If you use other operating systems, there are alternatives for it. Uh, if you use uh, Linux, there is uh, one file that is about 6,000 uh, lines long. Uh, that this is just uh, an example. Uh, it provides uh, the combinations that you need uh, if you want to type uh, in uh, different, um, uh, different different characters. You need a compose key, and then sequentially, just like we use Vim, uh, you type compose key, and then two other characters that in combinations give you immediately everywhere in your system. It means in browser, in shell, in uh, in editor, everywhere uh, give you the right character. So, for example, my last name Shedivi, the S, you write it with compose C shift S. If you want to write uh, sharp SS in German, it is compose SS. If you want the capital sharp SS, uh, it is compose shift S shift S. Uh, and uh, all the characters you have seen before with this scratching on the surface, I have typed them with my compose key and uh, two or three other keys. It is quite um, natural to, uh, to remember them. I managed to remember them, so it must be natural. Um, and you don't have to remember anything more than what you see on your keyboard. You can use this compose key even if you have to use the German keyboard, you can use it with the German keyboard. It's not that comfortable, but with the US keyboard, it works uh, perfectly well. Um, there are about 6,000 uh, lines uh, with predefined characters. Um, and you can also define your own combinations. You just, uh, in your home uh, directory, you put a dot uh, x compose and you write a similar, with similar grammar, you write your own definitions. I wouldn't recommend it because if you are sitting on a colleague's computer uh, and he doesn't, he didn't uh, um, define them, um, it wouldn't uh, really work uh, very well. So, uh, where to put, you don't have a compose key, so where could you put it? There is another file uh, that uh, defines uh, how to set up your XKB map. Uh, and in the left um, column, you see all the possibilities where you can put your compose key. So I like, I prefer to have them right next to Alt, so it's like the right window the key or uh, menu key. On modern ThinkPads, I think they put like print screen that you don't really need every day, so you can even define your uh, compose key as the uh, print screen or any other key that you don't uh, really need, but it uh, is on your keyboard and uh, that uh, you could uh, use uh, for your compose key. So this was the first step to our perfect keyboard, which is the second one. Right. <laughs> um, the caps lock. What can you do with the caps lock? Control, right. So let's do control. Uh, with your set uh, XKB map, uh, you can define you want uh, your caps lock as a control modifier. Okay, it's a good idea because control we need it quite a lot. But which other key do we need more in uh, escape? How about this? How about if you just hold your uh, caps lock and you uh, press another key, it's a control. But if you just hit your caps lock, it's escape. It's possible with the Xcape program for Linux, and there are alternatives <laughs> for other um, for other um, operating systems. Uh, the author, this is the uh, quote from uh, from the GitLab uh, from GitHub uh, uh, page, and uh, in the last sentence you see he, what he had on his mind why, why he why he did uh, this. Okay, so we are done, and we have our perfect keyboard. You just print your stickers a little bit smaller because otherwise they, uh, they will be pressed uh, together with the left uh, alt. Uh, but we can already start rocking or using Vim. So what is Vim? Vim is uh, just uh, another step uh, in the long history of uh, Unix uh, text editor. Who of you have uh, already used the uh, Ed editor? 
It is, it is an editor that you can use with a keyboard and line printer. You don't need a screen. And it worked like that in the, in the 70s. Uh, later then uh, came, after Ed, there came like uh, EM, I think, M. It was like editor for mortals. Uh, and later, later, Bill Joe uh, wrote um, uh, X. Uh, VI is the visual uh, extension of X, and uh, NVI is uh, the editor that you can install also on Linux today, which is, uh, from, which is open source, and uh, it's, a, it's a continuation of uh, VI. Uh, then uh, in the 80s came uh, different uh, alternatives like Stevie and Elvis. Stevie was on Amiga, and Bram Mullenar, uh, the, the author of Vim, who works on it uh, until today, um, he in started uh, with uh, Vim on uh, Amiga, inspired by Stevie, and later he uh, expanded it to all other, or most other operating systems. Uh, in the 2014, I believe, uh, there then came NeoVim. Is anybody using NeoVim here? I switched to NeoVim like one or two years ago. Uh, and missed the update of Vim 2.8, so I don't really know uh, Vim 8. Uh, I am quite happy with uh, NeoVim now. Uh, NeoVim is, oh, so what, what Vim and, and uh, Python have uh, common, it is that they have uh, Dutch BDFL, or both of them. And NeoVim is an, oh, BDFL is a benevolent dictator for life. Uh, and NeoVim is an uh, alternative that uh, many people are working on, and uh, it, for developers it should be a little bit more, more open. And they did uh, some uh, beautiful things that we are going to see later. So you see that VI, uh, Vim, and everything is uh, around a little bit longer than uh, Python 1, 2, or 3. So uh, why uh, some people say uh, VI has a very steep learning curve. I don't understand why. Every key on your keyboard is very useful. You don't uh, really need uh, um, a mouse. And uh, it, it is like something that if you learn it uh, once, uh, it will work uh, forever. Why shouldn't you use a mouse? If you are using Vim, uh, you have uh, with the basic uh, HJKL and with some other keys, uh, you have already learned uh, quite a lot of uh, other software that is based on Vim. Um, there are uh, some, uh, some shells. Uh, i3, i3 is a um, window manager, tiling window manager. The problem is that they wanted to put their uh, motion movement keys on JKL and the fourth key to the right of it, but you have seen that the fourth key to the right of it is almost anything else than the, than the, than the semicolon. Uh, the first thing when I configure i3 is that I move it once, uh, one to the, to the left. Qt Browser uh, is a web browser, and uh, Vimperator Vimium are, um, up, are extensions of uh, browsers of, uh, and some other. Uh, it, some other programs that do different things, but if you need something like movement, you can use HJKL. The problem with editors, many editors, many, many IDEs, uh, they use something like, um, like a VI mode. It works up to 97, 98%. And the, 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 the other 2%, you see just, ah, why is it doing something different than what I'm used to? So I would say it is worth uh, to, learn, uh, to learn VI. But the right question is, is it worth the time? We, I always take this uh, XKCD uh, chart, and I look. If I use something several times a day, and it spares me a few seconds, then it is already worth to use uh, to learn uh, uh, VI uh, or to invest uh, some time uh, into learning uh, a real editor like VI or, or Emacs. Because uh, I think uh, most of you are sitting like a f five, six, seven, eight uh, hours a day uh, in front of a computer. And how often are you riding, uh, driving a car? Maybe half an hour, one hour, or even not that every day. But you know how to drive a car. And comparing to professional drivers who drive the whole day, you, have, you are on the same road with the same responsibility. So, uh, and you drive the car, you have license, and you have invested uh, your time into it. And, 
So it means that if, uh, if you, your job is uh, to work with text, uh, it's worth to learn uh, an editor, one editor, uh, really uh, very well. Um, every car is not the same. So just like uh, not uh, every editor uh, is the same, because there are some things that are almost identical on every European car, but there are other things that you have always to search for if you are driving uh, a different car um, uh, and changing cars, because, for example, the reverse gear and uh, other things, they are uh, completely different. So we are back again with the VI, and uh, we will see that it is actually not that complicated to, to learn it all. How are you going to learn it? You can just try out. You can uh, uh, Google if you have a problem, look, uh, search on Stack Overflow. But actually, it is uh, quite a good idea to, learn, to read a book because a book is something that guides you to, uh, with, uh, to, guides you to, to discover all the possibilities, all the functions of a program. And for VI, the only, thing, the only book I can really recommend is Practical Vim. Uh, we have it in our company since a few years, and every year I take it for uh, two weeks uh, home, and I always put uh, post-its uh, on the pages where there are still new things that, that I'm not really using until now and uh, that, I could, uh, that I should consider uh, learning. Uh, Drew Nail um, does a great uh, podcast, uh, podcast, video podcast uh, called uh, Vimcast. About 70 of them are, have been already published. I can only recommend them. And uh, he is currently working uh, on a new book, uh, Modern Vim, where he will discuss uh, some other things in Vim 8 and also in Neo Vim. So, what are the levels of Vim? Uh, of course, at the beginning, you should learn the core Vim that is uh, described also in this book. Uh, deactivate uh, arrow keys uh, is a good idea until a colleague of you is sitting at your computer and cannot move. Um, remap keys uh, is not always a good idea because at the colleague's uh, computer it uh, will not uh, really work. Uh, you can try to shorten comments, uh, the, uh, edit the appearance, uh, uh, change the behavior, and also try a few plugins. Who thinks that uh, VI is only HJKL? Should uh, have a look at this table. Uh, the real power of uh, VI is that you can move in any direction really with only a few uh, keystrokes. Um, I, there, I, won't, <laughs> I won't show you my uh, Vim RC because it is long, um, about uh, 200 uh, uh, lines, uh, but uh, we'll show you just a few interesting things. For example, this one uh, allows you to, uh, not to, to stay uh, not at the, at the edge uh, of, the, of the screen. Uh, you can check your spelling. It means if you write a Python program, it will underline unknown words in comments and in strings, nowhere else. Uh, light line, this is part of my VimRC with the light line, uh, where I've put some, uh, some useful uh, stuff uh, in the bottom line, in the status line. Uh, this is a list of my plugins. We are not going to discuss them all, but I would recommend you go to VimAwesome, or you just, you just have a look at the plugin and then think, read the documentation, and then think, is it worth it? Because if you take a package of plugins like SPF 13, uh, it will just throw you a lot of functionality and at you, and you want to uh, uh, go to understand why it is doing something, because there will be like two or more plugins uh, maybe colliding even uh, each, uh, with each other. Uh, this is what I uh, said uh, at the beginning. Uh, I, am, I switched to NeoVim from Vim 7. Uh, so some parts of the new things in uh, NeoVim are already contained in uh, Vim. But the, um, the best thing I uh, discovered is, uh, uh, is the Python NeoVim. So it's a plugin, it's a package that you install and you can write your own Python plugins. Uh, Python gives you the power because uh, you know Python, and with Python you have much more possibilities to interact with net, with, uh, with network, with uh, database, uh, to do regular expressions, to to include SciPy, pandas, or anything. You can edit a text where there are some numbers, and you can calculate any mathematic uh, mathematic uh, um, results uh, uh, in the line. I would recommend to uh, use dot files. So a directory dot, dot files in your home directory where you uh, put uh, all the uh, all the configuration and you git it. So you uh, version 
control it on your computer and you synchronize it uh, with uh, GitLab or any other private or public uh, repo you have, um, which allows you to use uh, the same configuration on your home and work computer if the security guidelines of your company allow it. So this is a Python NeoVim. Uh, this allows you to connect from uh, from IPython or from Python, from a Python programs to running uh, running or new NeoVim instance, and then work with the whole buffer in uh, you are editing and with the whole comments that you are uh, you have in uh, uh, in um, Vim or NeoVim. Oh, sorry, NeoVim. Uh, you can communicate with them uh, in uh, Python, so it gives you more power. And I suppose that most of you are more c uh, fluent in uh, uh, Python than in uh, Vim script. And here is uh, just the few lines uh, of uh, of uh, one uh, Python uh, plugin that I wrote uh, for my email program. I'm using Mutt in our company uh, and write, write emails uh, in uh, Vim. And this program opens when 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 uh, I open a new mail and there there are the address the recipients of my email are already there. It uh, checks uh, for who is uh, there. If it is one, two, or three colleagues, they tell them like uh, "Hello, David," uh, "Comma," "Hello, Mike," and so on. Uh, if there are more people, it says like uh, "Hello, Susan." If there is someone outside of the company, it puts the signature at the end of my email and writes like "Sehr geehrter" in the beginning. So, I hope that if you are using this and this, you are really enjoying your tools. And if you have uh, already uh, paid attention on uh, how to uh, type uh, in other languages, you are going to be able to contact me on LinkedIn, on my special link. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, yes, in Arch Linux it is available, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think in, in Ubuntu you have to, to PPA it from somewhere. Debian, I'm not sure. Uh, the problem is uh, on our servers we have uh, Vim installed, uh, and these are common accounts, so I don't touch the configuration. Uh, I use uh, basic Vim, but on my computer, home computer or work computer, I can do anything I wish. So uh, I have already, I, you, I'm using Neo Vim there. But, uh, the call is still C. Hmm? The call is still C. Yeah. If I download dot files from, yeah, yeah, I have a dot files directory, and I do some, I do symbolic links, symbolic links to from my home directory. Uh, the difference between NeoVim and Vim, uh, the, the, there was a list, is that uh, it uh, puts its configuration files into dot config directory, so you have uh, everything there you need. But you. There are uh, there are tools to manipulate uh, to manage your dot files. I'm using it. I'm doing it uh, manually. Um, you put your on your no, no, no. There is no. I will maybe maybe some time. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Actually, actually, I was. This, this is. Uh, I could show it you now, but it's uh, too small, and I uh, have a terminal that cannot change uh, the size. Um, I uh, used it like few months, uh, so, so since a few months, and uh, now when preparing this talk, I have studied so many things about Vim that I'm just don't really want to show my Vim. <laughs> I will improve it. I will work on it. But it's it's like uh, your dot files. It is like your CV. If you are changing company or uh, changing computer, or you take it with you, and it is extension of your brain, hands, physical keyboard editor. You. It's 
possible to share them, but as I switched to NeoVim, I uh, abandoned Vim on my computer and using NeoVim only. Um, Any more questions? It's more of a more technical question. I would say I'm an intermediate Vim user, and my advancement always go like in batches. It's like, okay, now I'm going to try and learn something new, and then it stops and flattens out. I have a good guess. Um, but can you say something about? Uh, you showed already a picture. I have one. I have one colleague in my room, in my uh, office, and when she uh, hears like, she looks like that and me. And are you using VI now? So she knows that I know then that I am using doing something that is not really logical. And then okay, I have to think over. Yeah, just a very good mental game to 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 try to find better uh, better movements. Yeah, it's just like if you are driving a car every day the same uh, curve and. Hey, today I can drive it like a little bit efficient, more efficiently. Or more questions? Uh, we, in our company, we don't have really huge code bases. So uh, most projects are a few files that it's quite easy to to find them to uh, to search in them and usually you have the whole code base a little bit in your head Syntax highlighting what what I like uh, for example in Vim is the git cutter it shows you in every line if it is if it whether it has been changed since the last uh, git commit these are so useful things that, oh, okay, I have worked here, I have worked here, and... Uh, of course, yes. Pip8, uh, Flake, uh, PyLint, um, tests, PyTests as well, yes. And that Asun feature you mentioned, I think that's uh, included there. So you can deploy typing. You can? Um, calling linters and so on, the Asun feature. It is Async feature, 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 yes. Is that you get things like, uh, while typing. Yeah, this is, this is an advantage now of, of uh, NeoVim and now also of Vim 8. That this is asynchronous, so it means that you can co go on. It is not blocking, and uh, all the highlight, no highlighting or lighting, linting or uh, a Git uh, diff uh, uh, will appear later when they are available. But you can work, you can go on with working. Yes, I have no, uh, as I told you, I have no uh, remaps. So it's, I, in, at work our, on our servers, we have classical Vim with no configuration, and it's possible, yes. Yes, because, for example, this book, it's, it, uh, there is no plugin in it. It's basic, it uh, describes everything in the core Vim. So if you learn it, you can work on any, any editor, uh, the version of Vim anywhere, yeah. question for me. What can't you do in Vim? What? What can you not do in Vim? I cannot uh, draw images. Oh yeah, okay. that, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't be so sure that uh, there is uh, VI paint. General video players by now. It's written in JavaScript. Oh no. <laughs> okay. So thank you very much.